But when God was ready, when he was ready to help and, um, and solve my problem, I met the right doctors. And how did this happen? I used to be the public relations so social secretary of my, my old school association. And which meant that when letters come or when invitations came, it would come to me and I would broadcast it to everyone. Now, by, um, I had the seniors, I had the um, seniors, yes. They were two years ahead of me. They had just lost um, a classmate to breast cancer and they were having a memorial lecture for her. All this time I was living in denial. I would try everything not to go near negativity, especially when it concerns cancer. When I'm watching TV and I see cancer, I quickly change the channel. When I'm reading the newspaper, and I see cancer, I flip it. When I'm, you know, I just didn't want to hear cancer. And you can imagine this letter was sent into my inbox. When I saw it, I thought to myself, I said, I'm not going to go for this and I'm not going to broadcast it. But my conscience kept freaking me that, okay, if you don't want to go for it, then let other people go for it. So I decided I sent it to the groups and, um, you know, publicized the um, invite. But I made up my mind that I was not going to go for the event. Somehow on the day of the event, I picked up my bag and I went for this event. My plan was I'll just get there. When I get there, I'll, I'll let them see that I came, but I will not enter into the hall. But on getting there, something miraculous happened. Our old um, principal, our old vice principal, our old um, math teacher and biology teachers, they started, they came in, they got, they came to the, the, the event. And as they were coming in, I was with some group of um, friends who were also old students. And we decided to walk towards them to greet them. As we got to them, the first thing that happened out of everybody, the vice principal, she was already old at that time. I'm sure she was almost 80 or something, you know, because this was like 25 years after we had left, left secondary school. She, out of everybody, she just held my own wrist and said, you're the small girl, you have grown so much. And she held my, you know how it is when old people hold you. And she kept walking me into the hall. That's the hall that I said I wasn't going to go into. Before I knew it, I was already in that hall. And then I told myself, Tinu, you're already here. Why don't you just sit down and listen? Meanwhile, I've been trying to travel and um, go to the embassy but each time I went to the embassy, I was denied a visa. I didn't want to have any treatment in Nigeria because I thought we didn't have oncologists in Nigeria. The good thing that these people had done that day was they had invited oncologists from Luth. They had invited oncologists from America. They had Julie Gralo, yes. They had invited an oncologist from East Africa. And, you know, the three of them were on the high seat. But I sat down that day only to listen to the woman that was from America because I planned at that time that I was going to do my, my treatment in, my, in America and probably I was going to hear that there was no cancer or something. Before this time, we had sent the results to University of Maryland and University of Maryland had asked us to bring $100,000. At that time, I didn't even have $1,000, talk less of $100,000. My, my folks live in America. They were ready to have me in America, but we couldn't say at the embassy that I was traveling for medical reasons because if I said that, they would ask me to go and pay for the hospital bill in, um, uh, before coming. And I didn't have money, but our plan was I'll just get to America and I'll find a way around this and I'll get to the hospital. Now, let me not go too much into the stories. Long, to cut the long story short, I got my treatment. I ended up getting my treatment in Luth through um, Professor... C-A-I-J-K-B, of blessed memory. Now, I tried to travel for all the treatments. All those times, I kept being refused the visa. God kept me here. I guess he wanted me to see the state of our health sector and talk about it and expose what has been the cause of high mortality rates in women in Nigeria. This was a, at a time when women in Nigeria were not talking about breast cancers. We had rich women, we had prominent women who would go abroad to treat breast cancer and they would come back and keep their mouth shut and nobody would know, that is if they survived. Except the died, would you know that um, they had died of cancer? Nobody was saying anything about cancer. And our health sector, the cancer department, was nothing to write home about. The doctors were there, 
though they, we didn't have enough and even till date we don't have up to a hundred oncologists you know but they they, they were very, very good doctors but they had nothing to work with at this time going to lose ending up in lose as a journalist it made it easy for me to keep jotting down everything that i was seeing because as i was i mean everything i saw there it was like the doctors were magicians they were just doing magic because they had no equipment to work with and yet they were saving lives this was really amazing to me and god did something in all of my treatments god there was grace which was very prominent i mean very obvious the first thing that happened was I met Dr. Ajekigbe. Dr. Ajekigbe, without knowing me, took me in like, like a family. And because of that, he was the head of oncology in Luke. It made every other doctor treat me so well. And I got everything done at the right time. We had several, pa uh, several patients who could not afford to eat three square meals, and yet they had cancer. They, we had loads of cases, you know. Some of them would just come to the hospital. They didn't have money to treat cancer. Instead of, because they could not afford to even eat three square meals, they would just go home and they die. All this were happening in my presence. And I thought that I had a lot of grace. And because of this grace, I must come out and let the world know what I had gone through and what is going on in Nigeria. I used my, my, my media background to publicize this I came out at the time that I was coming out. I, my, the, 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 I, I, I was almost rejecting this message and God kept pushing me. I would sleep. I couldn't sleep. I kept being disturbed and it, God did something, else, something again. At this period, nobody, I didn't see anybody online that was talking about cancer or that was advocating about cancer. But I saw one lady, Chika Okem Akiru. She was in America. And she had just also had cancer as well. She was talking about it. And God will disturb me. Go out and talk about this thing, I tell you. And I tell her, but God, she's in America. She's in a place where people are having, people are talking, people, people understand what it is to have cancer. How can I come out and start talking about cancer? But the spirit kept pushing me and I forced myself out. The first day that I came out, I, I can tell you that about 5,000 over 5,000 people viewed that story that very day. And that was how it all started for me. I eventually fitted myself in Luth and, you know, I, I got ill there in Luth. I had my radiotherapy. I had my, my chemotherapy. I had surgery, you know, but yeah. all, in all of this, I can also say that everything went very well. 